Hi, today I, uh, I'm Susan Clare, Gourmet Quilter. Today I thought I'd show you how to make a fun little heart block. Now you may have made these before or not, but I thought they were really sweet. What with uh, Valentine's Day coming up, of course, um, my wedding anniversary coming up, probably I need to make a heart quilt. So I thought it would be kind of fun to do it just using some two and a half inch strips. So I found some two and a half inch strips. Now, of course, you could use any color. You only need small amounts. You might have lots of leftover lengths of two and a half inch strips. This all works. And then a light color or something that you want as your background. So I've got this light colored one as my background here. Um, so I've only used two and a half inch strips and then cut them to size. So I've, for the hearts themselves, we've got two sides. Now I've chosen to do them two different colors. You could do them the same fabric. Um, and you just need a two and a half inch wide strip that's four and a half inches long to make them as I'm making them today. And then for this lower corner down here, you need a two and a half inch square of the background. So I've cut those. Now I've already drawn a diagonal line on there and also another line half an inch away so that we can sew both lines, cut between and then save this corner for another delicious project. We've done that before. Then for the top little corners, we just need some little squares on each side. So you do need to work with two rectangles, even if you choose to do them the same, so that we can put these corners on on there. And it's the same thing, they're a square, and I've just marked a diagonal line with a pencil and from point to point there. Much smaller, we only need the one. There wouldn't be any point trying to save that smaller bit, I don't think, not for what I do anyway. So I'll just show you how I've achieved that. Again, it's from the two and a half inch strip and I've simply you can either cut a strip in half if you're wanting quite a lot of these so that it's one and a quarter inches wide or you could just cut a piece off that is one and a quarter inches and I can do that here so I've got it lined up with my board here and I'm coming one and a quarter inches along from there and you can use these markings on the board and your ruler to help you line things like that up so I'm lining up with my quarter inch mark on the board down here and up here, I'm lining up with my quarter inch in from the next inch on one of the lines on the board. So that will give me a straight line one and a quarter inches away from here, if that's what I've measured away. And I can cut that that way, and I can cut that in half. And again, it's that one and a quarter size again, and you just want to line up the top of your ruler as well as the bottom so that everything is sitting nice and straight. And so we have now two one and a quarter inch squares. If you were wanting to cut this in half along the length, because you're going to do quite a few, it's just the same thing. I'm going to come across one and a quarter inches from this edge this time, so I'm going to put my quarter inch line on a one inch line on the board, it's, and I've lined up this piece with the lines on the board, and I can just cut a whole length that way, and then I can slice it into my squares that way. So really a matter of whether you're just doing a small number of squares or whether you wanted to do a whole lot out of the same piece as to which way you cut them. They do need their little lines diagonally marked on them unless you can sew them without marking. I like to have mine marked so that I've got something to, to sew on to follow otherwise it's very easy to sew in a crooked line. So I'm going to do the bigger triangles first and so we want them to go in opposite directions, so we want to be coming from a central point out so that they end up obviously going the other way. And then we can just chain piece. So if you're doing a few of these in different colours maybe, there's lots of reasons why you might want to make hearts. Um, it is Valentine's Day coming up, but that's not the only reason. It might be because you like hearts, it might be because you want to make a special book for a special friend. Uh, there's look, so many reasons. Hearts are always such a universally acceptable shape. So you can chain piece them through, even though they're going in different directions, you just need to make sure you're going in the right direction yourself. Sewing on that um, full diagonal line across, and then we can just come back through, if you're chain piecing quite a few, come back through and if you're going to use the second part, do the second line of sewing, pop those through as well and that just gives you rather than just some triangles that you might not find a good use for it gives you some half square triangle units that you might find a very good use for that's how I feel 
So now I'm just going to trim between, cut between the two lines of sewing so that I've got a quarter inch seam allowance and so this piece here that we might not have perhaps used is now a very usable house square tri triangle unit. You could use it in a border, you could use it in some sashing, you could use it any way you like. But we don't need it for this particular block unless we put it around the outside edge perhaps. So now I'm just going to press those seams towards the colour. That's partly because I've got a white background and I didn't want the seam to be sitting out that way but I just find that if I know I'm going towards the colour on it, everything it's just easy. I don't have to think too much. So now we've got a, a, the point of the heart down here. Now we need these top little edges. So we just need to pop these on. So again we're going to come across the corner. We've marked our diagonal lines. We're going to come across and we can do the same thing here. We can chain piece these. Just do one corner at a time and then come back and do the other corner so that you can keep going through. Now the way it looks at the moment, it looks like we're going to have very pointy tops of our hearts. But in actual fact, those points will disappear a little bit when we put, the, put them in something because that seam allowance will disappear. So we've got the two corners on, now we want to do the other one. So like I said, that looks like it's more or less meeting in the top there as it should because that's the sort of size that we've cut so you might find you want to put these on a cushion on a quilt you might want them on a little bag you might want to make it a little heart pot holder, oh so many things you can do. Now to trim these corners off I find it's easy to do both at once. I lay my ruler on so that I've got my quarter inch line against one of the seams and I just make sure I come out quarter of an inch from the other seam and you can kind of do both corners at the same time by doing it like this. So I'm going to cut that one and then I'm going to cut that one so I don't have to keep moving everything around. So the tops are done the same on both halves, it's only that lower, larger corner that has to be on opposite sides, but the tops are done just the same. So we can press those now. We could do stripy hearts and dotty hearts and flowery hearts and hearts with cats on. Oh, I don't know, there's so many things you can do in life. We're so fortunate with all the fabrics that we have available these days. Oops. Oh, it's just messing up today. Well, perhaps it's me, not the iron. So now we've got two hearts like that, or two halves, I should say, of our heart. And so now we just want to join those together. So because we've pressed all the seams in towards the colour, that does mean that they're going to be all in towards or sitting over each other there but it hasn't been a problem when I've joined the hearts up so I'm going to stay with that rather than having them going in opposite directions so we're just going to join that center seam now just make sure our seams sit flat and then we're actually going to press that seam open because of those seams coming in to meet, rather than having a bulk going one way, I found it sits a whole lot better if we press this seam open with those little joins in it. Just keep an eye on those other seams that they don't get caught up in the pressing process. And there, we have a very delicious small heart block. So the block measures four and a half inches because that was the size that we were working with. Um, so you could now go ahead, you could frame them. So once you pop a little frame on, when you take that seam allowance away, you are going to lose just those top sharp points there. The bottom one will sit just nicely at a seam and again you'll lose a little bit on the sides but that just kind of gives you that slightly, from a distance, 
a little bit more of a rounded look rather than coming it won't come to the point once it's sewn in to something so I thought that was a fun little block you could uh, make a whole series of them they could all be in different colors same colors you could sash them you could frame each block you could uh, put them together you wouldn't have to separate if you if you don't separate them and just put the blocks together that will be fine because this bit here kind of you'll kind of have a little bit of a zigzaggy look because this will also join here so that they'll kind of be all joined in a row and so you'd almost have like a little zigzag of hearts which could be very effective as well. So there's lots of little possibilities with that little four and a half inch measured heart. I hope you've enjoyed that block. I'm sure I understand. I hope you have a good Valentine's Day and I will see you again with another tutorial. Thank you.